So here are some examples of the project we're going to make together. I use kind of a photographic sensibility to these little collage paintings that I've done. I did a series of Deborah Harry paintings because that was of interest to me at the time to do something a little more whimsical and maybe more pop culture. And here's one of the other ones, a little larger. Um, hard to fit in the whole frame, but you'll notice like this is the photographic element and then all the collage stuff around. Same with this first one. So I start with the photograph and then add to that with paints and mediums and collage and stencils and all sorts of stuff. And so this is the style that, when I say style, I don't mean it has to be this graphicness, but this photographic collage style is the painting that we're going to work on. So I'm going to set these aside. Just go over a tiny bit of things that we'll need as we're doing this. Paint brushes. You know, all sizes, whatever. Scissors. We need this photographic transfer medium, which is a, I've used this Mod Podge version. And I'll take a close up picture of all of these things that will be needed. Paints, all kinds. I have some that I found at thrift stores or estate sales, like this folk paint, acrylic paint tubes of paint. Use only use only acrylics, they dry faster. Oils tend to take a long time. And often if you paint over oils with something else, it won't adhere properly. So I just stick with acrylics. With paintings like these, these are kind of my less serious paintings. If I'm working on things of a of a more serious nature or maybe I know it's going to go in a, ga a gallery or it's part of a series that I'm doing. I tend to stick with a lot higher quality materials, but for various reasons and different projects, I have a lot of very inexpensive paint, stuff that's been given to me, stuff that I've, like I said, I found at yard sales, things like that. It does not have to be the expensive kind. I mean, I have, this is probably like a really cheap brand. Also spray paint. I like to use gold spray paint when I'm doing these paintings because it just adds a, a real impact uh, with the metallic. But you can, if you just have stuff around, that is the best stuff to use. Rather than go out and buy special things for this, try to find things that you already have. Maybe that you have a can of orange spray paint in the basement. What you will need is kind of a gel medium of sorts. This is a golden brand. Any brand is fine. So there's a high gloss, there's a matte finish. It doesn't matter whatever you prefer or if you don't know just grab one. Or you can use, I used to get these huge tubs of Mod Podge and you can use this as a sealant. It'll, it's also like an adhesive, kind of works for everything. So sometimes this is just great to have on hand. I'm like I said, I'm trying to use up a lot of stuff, so it's almost empty and it might not be very pliable on there, but we'll see. So brushes, scissors, all the regular stuff. And then when you'll need to pick out a photograph that you want to use, like the Deborah Harry that I used, and maybe some scrap papers. So I found in my drawers of stuff that I save forever, just these really thin tissue paper Kind of, there's some cutouts, there's this uh, patterned paper, which I like, except I'm really digging the back of it. So the back is kind of this red mottled look. So I'm going to be using some of the back of this paper for later, so go figure. Materials, like I have some quilt pieces, some silky stuff, I've got some velvet. Put it out. Maybe we'll use it in the painting. So anything kind of goes. Stencils, I have a lot of kind of this beehive pattern. That's what I have on hand. And I have a, a bee stencil as well. So if you have some old stencils, maybe you have stencils, letter stencils. You know, you could write some words with those or whatever. So just gather some things around that you might want to use for this collage type painting. Little old doilies. You never know. Glitter. I don't advocate glitter 
of against glitter because it's messy and it just gets into everything and it's not very eco-friendly. But if you have leftover glitter from some project that already exists in the world, maybe you want to use it up on one of these paintings. That would be great. So we'll get started. Hi, my name is Jennifer Randall and I am an artist and I am here to show you how to create your own painting uh, using a photo transfer method onto a wood canvas. And we'll be starting, this is the very beginning, so we'll be starting with getting your photo ready, picking out a photo, that's totally up to you. I picked out a photograph of Frida Kahlo and you will want to just print this out on your home printer. You can print out in color or black and white. I chose to print out in black and white because I like to add my own colors later to the painting. We'll be adding paint, collage stuff, stencil on top of all of this to create a very collage-like painting. Um, so first off, you'll want to pick out a picture. It could be of an animal, it could be of, of someone you know, maybe you're making this as a gift for them, it could be them. Um, it could be a tree, whatever you want. So that's totally up to you about the actual photograph. And you just print it out from your uh, home printer uh, on a piece of paper, and that's all you do to begin. So I will be cutting out around. You could use this whole photograph, but I like to add so much of my own stuff that I just want her outline. I want Frida's outline to use on the painting. You will also need um, Mod Podge Photo Transfer Medium. That's what I use. There might be some other products out there, but this has just worked for me and I'm, I'm really used to using it. So that's what I'm gonna use. And you'll want a, um, a board type canvas, you know, surface. This one is a really nice pre-made one with a really smooth surface, which is great to use. You can also use a canvas, a stretched piece of canvas to do this with as well. I don't think they turn out quite as well as on when they're done on the piece of wood. Um, if you wanted to use even a scrap piece of wood, just make sure it's sanded really smoothly that your surface is good for your photo transfer. So you want the right size for this and your photo. You know, um, you could make a very small one, you could do a much larger one. I have chosen just kind of a 12 by 12. So to begin with, I will cut out um, this photograph of Frida. So I am just going to go around the edges. And I'm not too meticulous about this. You could be really exact, but the rest of the painting will cover up some of the, the borders and it, it's okay. You don't, it doesn't have to be perfect is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and that's my art. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's the tagline. So you want to really kind of let yourself be a little bit loose later on after this part. So she's got flowers, those are kind of hard to cut around, but I'm just going to wing it. I'm going to add some of my own flowers later also. So just cut out your photo. So there's our image. Um, the other thing I forgot to say was that whatever image you use, it will be reversed. So if you have anything with words on it, those words are going to get reversed. If you print, if you print out from your uh, computer and you need the words to read and you need it a certain direction, you'll want to mirror image your your photograph. For me, for this, it doesn't matter which way her face is facing. So with with most of the things that I've done. I haven't used words. If I if I like if I want words in it, I add them later. Um, I can stencil words or just write out something that I want it to say. 
So this was this is the completion of the first step is cutting out your photograph and getting ready to prepare it and place on the on the piece of wood. So the next step is to transfer this to the wood. Um, I'm going to set it more a little bit in the middle, not down. This could be really interesting also. Um, maybe I will put it this way. See, that's art. You can change your mind and try new things. Um, so you'll get your Mod Podge photo transfer medium and you're going to be applying it to this side of the photograph, to the photo side. Um, another way to do it is you can also trace around your photo and then apply it to the wood and press this down. But this is how this is how I'm used to doing it. So you get the photo transfer medium, and it's usually a little thinner than this. But <laughs> this is how it goes when you just got a lot of stuff. Okay, and then you'll want to, if you can see, I'm just spreading it out across the entire photograph. So you're just doing a nice coating. And I usually take too much, so I put it back in. That's how I like it thick. So you just spread it around. Make sure it's a nice coating. Make sure you get all the edges. So when you're doing this, you'll want to do it on a surface that you can get the gluey photo medium on and not worry about the mess. Um, yeah, so just make sure you cover all the edges. So as you can see, the whole photo is covered in the photo transfer medium. So I'm gonna bring back the wood piece and begin to lay it down. And then I run my hand kind of up the middle first and work my way out to the edges to get it really smooth. And you just want to stick it all the way down, but you don't want bubbles. So that's why I'm working from the center out. If you did have a um, squeegee handy, like this, like you would use for screen printing, you can also kind of press over that photo and that will make, ensure that it's flat, that everything's evened out, that you've gotten to all the edges. Like that. Put the cap back on because that's why it gets super thick. And there you go. So we have our photo transfer resting on the canvas. Um, the recommended time is 24 hours that that dries and then we're going to go through the removal process to you know um, to reveal the photo underneath so we'll be back after this dries okay so it has been 24 hours um, since we placed our photograph down on the on the board yes I'm wearing the same thing 24 hours later. Thanks for noticing. Um, what we will need today is a sponge, just an old sponge would be great. A little bit of water in a cup or just saturate your sponge. This part will be a little bit messy because as we reveal the picture, we're going to be kind of um, peeling away or, or we'll be exfoliating the um, paper off of the photograph and this will create kind of a mess just little pieces of paper not a big deal but just so you know um, so you'll want to kind of brush those aside and clean that part up first we will get the sponge really wet um, not where it's just dripping a lot of water but um, you know a good wetness and we're going to start sponging the picture and getting it uh, wet. So just rub the wet sponge around 
on the surface. And you might start noticing the top layer of the um, paper dissolving a little bit and coming off. I don't know if you can see it well. So if you start rubbing, you're going to get like little rolls of paper coming off. And that's what you want. So you're not ruining it. We are just exfoliating <laughs> the paper. Um, so sometimes this works just really well and nice and neatly and it comes off perfectly. Other times I've had, you know, maybe I've used a little too much water and I've kind of gone through the surface of the image and there's a little bit of a um, opaqueness or a blank spot. All of it works. It's really hard to make a mistake um, during this and even a mistake can be somehow reconfigured into the art piece. So try not to worry. I know this is, if you've never done this before, it's like you feel like you're ruining something right now, but you're not. You're revealing it. Uh, emerging from a cocoon. <laughs> However you want to think about it is fine. So I am simply like rubbing my fingers across and these rolled up little pieces of paper are coming off. So as you can see, it's, re it's starting to reveal the black and white photo underneath. Um, you'll need to like add a little bit more water, certain places, keep it going. So I just, you know, rub around in circles and kind of roll it like you're kneading some dough. Um, and just get that top layer off. And I just want to keep showing you so you can see the process, what it's starting to look like as you do this. It'll be a little rough. You'll feel the paper. That's fine. Like, don't worry about that. You can rub off too much, but if you just kind of take your time and you don't have to press too hard, it's just more about taking the time to roll off the surface. And if you need to add a little more water, add a little more water. And just keep going until you until you're really getting down to your photo. And you'll be able to tell where there's just a little more surface paper left. And you can kind of go back over those spots. So let's keep going here. A little more water. And if it starts to, I noticed like one little section of mine along the edge started to lift up, just press it back down because we'll be going over it with other things. And um, also we can paint, if, if something quote unquote messes up, you can paint over it or glue a different piece of paper on there and do some sort of collage. So we really kind of start to go with the flow with this. We're almost there. But you'll see kind of how messy it is because all these little shaving pieces come off. You can rub with the sponge. It tends to get all um, kind of matted up on the sponge when you do that, but it's an okay way to do it too. So you'll notice now um, I've got most of the top layer of the paper off and there is that image. It's mirrored from the original photograph um, of Frida. And I can kind of fine tune this. It's going to be a little fuzzy so you can, you can kind of keep lightly rubbing this to get off some of the fuzzies. But if you keep rubbing um, aggressively especially, you're going to start to rub off the actual picture. So you can just kind of brush off the excess and don't worry about, don't worry about this mess and don't worry if there are a little bit of fuzzies left on the photo because we'll be going over with various uh, mediums and varnishes and things like that. So it will, it will appear more perfect than this. 
So that's the second step. Look how far we've gone. <laughs> the hardest part is waiting overnight for the, um, the transfer medium to take effect. So there. So this is kind of what you're going to end up, your own picture obviously, but this is what it's going to end up looking like after this step. And you can kind of let that dry, let it set, because the paper is, and the surface is kind of wet, the transfer I should say is wet. Um, so let this dry and then we'll gather the materials we need to start embellishing this and making it look really colorful and fun. My um, transfer is dry, um, got most of the fuzz off. I went back over it with a little damp towel just to kind of get the rest of the fuzzies off of the surface. So I'm left with a smoother surface in the image. Um, so we'll get started on kind of playing around with the background and the foreground and everything. You need a cup of water, there's your brushes, maybe a little old old plastic or an old plate. I'm a big fan of, of using plates for mixing paints. Um, often they can be washed off really easily. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive at yard sales and things like that and they make great palettes. Uh, but right now this is what I have. <laughs> so we're, that's what I'm going to use. So when approaching this next phase of the painting, we're going to be using color and textures and you want to kind of think about what colors are speaking to you. Like I said, if you just have leftover paints from a project, use those. Don't go buy anything special. If you need some paints, you know, don't, don't spend money on anything too pricey. Um, I just have a lot of leftover paints from various projects. So I'm just going to choose some colors that are speaking to me today. And honestly, that's how my process works is, oh, these colors look really good today. Sometimes it's bright yellows like the other Deborah Harry painting. And other times I kind of go with a lot of this jade, jadeite green, turquoise, reds. That's what I'm going for today. So. I'm also thinking about maybe leaving an area that looks like the wood might be interesting. So we'll see how that part goes as well. Get your colors ready. Um, get any paper that, that's interesting to you. Um, I'm going to be using this red paper that I found, but I'm using the opposite side, the model side. It has some white and red in it. I think that's going to be really interesting for this. So this is the time to kind of play a little bit. Determining where you might want to collage some paper. And I was playing around with this a little earlier before I started recording. Um, but this is going to be kind of where the collaged paper goes just so I have an idea in my head. And I am also possibly gonna leave a little area that looks like wood. But I wanna get down some paint first before I put the paper on. Um, Cause this will be kind of my second layer. And when you start to add the different layers is when the painting seems to get really interesting. So when you've got paint and then you put paper maybe some collage paper on top of that, and then more paint or another type of surface, it really starts to get some depth to the painting. So it becomes more interesting to the eye. Um, I'm going to be using this green. A good thing to do also is to mix the paint with some sort of gel medium. Um, I've got like a matte finish and I've got a gloss finish whatever preference you have but this extends it and also gives it kind of a different sheen even if it's matte you're getting a different type of sheen so I'm going to mix some of that in there and I also use this to put a coat over the photograph 
for the photographic transfer. So it gives it a, a better finish to work on later. And I'll explain more as we get to that. Um, but it takes out the absorbency of any paper that might be on there. So take some of the gel finish, the gel medium, and start to apply it to the outline of your, to the whole thing, to the whole photo. And just give it a nice coating. And if it goes over the edges a little bit onto the wood, it's okay. Um, and then that, it usually dries pretty quickly and you're able to start going over it with paints and stuff. So just make sure it's smooth. Maybe you don't have too many lines in there that are raised. Um, of course, you're going to see the brush marks. That's great. We want that. Okay, so I have a nice clear coat on that. And that can be drying. Um, you might see that it's a little glossier. And light. And then I'm going to mix some of the gel medium into the paint. And then I'm just going to start painting. Uh, I'm going to do a lot of the background in this color because I just love this color. <laughs> I even painted the porch on my house this color. I like it so much. So I just dripped a drop of paint on the surface of the photograph. Uh, and then I just kind of wiped it off. But don't don't be afraid if that happens because we'll just honestly work it into the whole piece. So I'm just going to go around and I'm not being super careful of the border. Um, like I said, we're doing so many layers. This layer does not have to be perfect. And here you know, use all the brush marks you want. It can be thick, it can be thin, it can be super pristine and everything's even, or it can just be more haphazard. It's all fine. Now even, I like this. So this is, um, as you're painting, you're gonna kind of see things that you like and I like how this just kind of gradually disappears right there. So I'm just going to leave that. I mean you can make it all solid or you can make it you can make it very painterly so it's just you're just kind of rubbing over the surface. If you're used to painting you're going to have your own you know readily known things that you like to do and things that you don't. And if you're new to it just come at this with a sense of play. Like, this won't be perfect. Maybe this is my first project. Um, don't be hard on yourself. You definitely want some freedom in this and freedom, Frida. Uh, we want some freedom and we want to allow ourselves to just kind of create as we go. Okay, so I have kind of laid out some uh, scrap paper that I was talking about earlier and made it into a composition that I'm pretty happy with. So um, this could be your next step as well, finding some paper or, ma or material. Um, you can cut out from magazines, like just the bulk of the words, you know, makes a really interesting background. Uh, just experiment. Use a couple different things. Um, this is about play and experimentation and just coming up with something fun. So let's try not to think too too hard about it. But color and composition always come into play in my mind. So um, the next step I am going to use the gel medium again and or you could use glue or the Mod Podge to to place all this down. Um, and don't worry about getting too much elsewhere. So I'm going to take the gel medium and just put it down or the Mod Podge, 
looks great as well. Because that's, that's kind of like her decoupage, which is part of this process. Um, laying the paper down, and I've left a little wood showing like I talked about earlier, just to experiment with that. And get it all underneath. And then we're also going to go on top of the paper with the gel medium. So you have a base coat um, that's helping it to act as glue. And then we're going to put a top coat. On mine, I see a little bit of bubbling on the paper. That's fine. I don't, I don't mind. So this is kind of how it's going. So I put the gel medium on the board underneath, place the paper on top, and now I'm going back over the paper with the gel. And this is the golden soft gel matte finish. You could use that. I also have gloss. <laughs> Whatever. Use both of them. I probably will end up using both. So this way it's kind of saturating this thin tissue paper. I love using tissue type paper because it often becomes a little bit see-through. So I'm going to move on to the next pieces. So now I'm going to concentrate more on the um, actual photo, Frida's face. And I'm going to just pick some different colors, have a little rag handy to kind of wipe your brush. Let's just play with some colors. Now I'm using kind of a peach color and I'm putting it on and kind of rubbing it around because I want more of a very soft finish with the paint. And if I think it's too thick, because I want to see through it, I don't want it to be solid. I can rub some off with the towel, make it softer. You just see a softness of the, of the more peach tone right here. I'm going to carry that up to her face. And also again, I'm going to take the towel to kind of spread it around, make it thinner. So it's just going to give a tint rather than a solid color. So the peach is hard, a little bit hard to see, um, but I've just put a thin layer and kind of rubbed it around. And let's just keep going with different colors. Also for the background, I want to make more layers happening. So I'm going to pick some different colors of paint. What colors feel right? I'm going to pick an orange. A light blue, um, some white. Sometimes adding white is great as well. So I'm just going to start going here with all the different colors. So I'm going to start with some blue. And really, we're just kind of adding different layers. So I'm going to just use some brush strokes and add some blue streaks, kind of. So you'll see I'm just making some shapes using the brush strokes, wanting to add layers. I don't want to cover everything up, but I do want to add some depth. And if I use the brush strokes so that they are not solid over the whole piece, they just kind of taper off, just lightly brushing across. And again, you can take your little um, rag take some of the paint off so it's not so heavy. And then I'm going to keep going with a few different colors. I'm just making squiggles, different shapes. I'm going to go back to the green that I started with. There's still some that's good. <laughs> So again, we're just playing around with color, getting different textures and layers on, and we just keep going with that. And if you feel like you've put down a color that you don't like, just wait for it to dry and paint over it. You'll want to kind of let the paints dry in between layers because 
Otherwise they'll start blending together and just get really muddy or just kind of turn like a brown hue. So you want to keep things drier so that when you do paint over something, it doesn't just smudge it all. So here's what I have so far. This kind of looks like a mess right now, but it's going to come together. So be patient and have fun doing it. Just the joy of spreading paint on a surface is really therapeutic. So enjoy that all that process. And I'm doing the flowers in her hair. And these I'm kind of doing thick. And I'm really liking the hot pink against the green. And jade green. And I'm going to carry these flowers out into the painting as well. This isn't paint by numbers, so you've got to do other things around. So I'm just going to kind of carry the pink out in the same flowery shapes and textures. And it's easy to overdo something. So better to kind of reel yourself in if you tend to overwork something or feel like, oh, I need to just keep adding more. Um, maybe just stop and look at it, see what you think of it before you just keep going with certain things. Like, like I'm choosing with these flowers. I'm thinking that might be enough. So I'm going to step back, look at it. I think I'm going to add one more down here, though, just to kind of balance things out. And I'm going to stop right there. And I'm going to let all of this paint dry before continuing on to the next level or layer. Um, but I do want to add some more tissue paper. Um, the different color tissue paper is fun because it becomes a little translucent and you can see through it down to the other layers. This one happens to have a pattern in it already. So I think that's going to be kind of fun to play somewhere. Uh, I might cut it up into different sections. So we're going to let the paint dry and come back and keep adding some more layers. So I let that first layer of paint dry um, along with the tissue paper that I had placed down. And I'm going to go for a second layer of some different stuff. I found an old doily that I've cut up into a kind of crescent shape. I'm going to add some more tissue paper and paint. I'm going to cut up this extra piece with the pattern that I had and just start, you know, building different layers now. So I'm going to go ahead and make, adhere the um, kind of crocheted doily pieces to her headdress and add some more depth to that. And then after all of that dries, I'm going to go back over with more flowers. So I'm covering up kind of some of the flowers that I did um, in the previous layer, but I'm going to go back over it again and add more. So uh, covering things up is kind of part of this collage process. Um, so feel free to put something over different areas. I'm going to add some more of the red tissue paper with the bright red side. And I'm going to go back over even the areas that I put down things before. And I'm just using the gel medium, you can use the Mod Podge, to um, place something that's a different type of material onto the painting. Anything that will adhere it. Glue. This is a great glue, Sobo, uh, for crafts. It's really adhesive and, and nice and thick. I'm kind of playing around with her hair and her crown. I probably should have used the glue. That would have been better, but I'm going to add a little more of the medium on top just to set it. So I've added these crochet pieces to the, her crown, her hair, and her um, accessories up there. And then a little piece right up here as well. So you can use different materials. Um, 
crochet pieces like I am. I just have them around. So if you're finding things that are just around your house, that's the best. Um, it is fun to go shopping kind of at junk stores, thrift stores for different things. And I usually have keep a box of just things that I use for projects like this. And then I always just kind of rummage back through those boxes and see what I can use for each project. But I'm going to now put on some more of the tissue paper, play around, and then I'm going right over the top of the tissue. This makes it a little more opaque and seals it really well. So as I mentioned earlier, it's like I want to say it's hard to make a mistake. It's impossible to make a mistake because you can just go back over it. Uh, I'm going to cut up some of this tissue paper and use this as well. And just play around with it, you know, set it down, see how you like how it's looking in that area, move it around, just play. Oops, see, broke off a piece of the tissue paper, but that's fine. <laughs> it's very thin. And I can see the red underneath the green tissue, which is very interesting to me. And also the tissue is over an area that I painted white. And I can see that coming through as well. Um, these pre-made boards have a really nice gallery wrap edge to them. And you can just carry your paper or paint around the edges, which I think is great. So when I put that green tissue over the red areas and the paint, it just adds an interesting, more interesting depth. I'm going to keep going with that. And I want to kind of follow her outline a little bit with this. So I'm trimming it to go around her face a little bit. So I put a piece of tissue paper kind of on this side of her and it just creates more interest. That's what we're doing by adding all these different things and layers, just making the eye more interested as it's looking at the art piece. So just keep going with your own materials that you're using, playing around with the placement and take your time. But I'm just using random small pieces that I've cut off of the main piece kind of just to use them up, but also sometimes when it's not so planned, it looks good too. I really like the way this uh, green on top of the other colors is looking, all the pieces that I've added. So when something's good, you want more of it. <laughs> I'm gonna do just a little bit more. And this is just from experimenting um, that I'm discovering. Oh, that looks good. And that's what you want. That's what most of it's about. Okay, so that's probably enough of the tissue paper. Um, so as I was just kind of looking at this today, um, I was thinking with all the colors that I really wanted some yellow in there. Fluorescent yellow. Let's see how bright this is. <laughs> oh, that's really bright. That could be fun. Um, this is like something you would think of if you were decorating for the 1980s. Although I don't think we had this fluorescent of a, of a yellow back then. <laughs> so, Let's just try it. Always good to have rags handy. I use um, old t-shirts that are worn out and just cut them up into squares. All right, so here's the super bright yellow. It's kind of translucent, which is interesting. So I'm just smudging it around with my finger to kind of make it 
um, a little more light, not so heavy. And don't be afraid to use your hands, the brushes, the towel, all sorts of stuff. So you notice this real kind of bright area over here. I've added the, added the yellow. I'm going to do that in a few different places. I like that. So as you can, you can see how it's really brightened up kind of some of these areas. And I might add a little bit more later um, as well. Make it a little heavier if I want to. So even though the gel medium is still drying around the crocheted piece, I'm going to add paint on top of that. It will all dry. It might take a little longer, but so I'm going right on top of the crocheted piece. That one right there. And I just want to integrate it so it's not so it just doesn't stand out like a perfect crown. And I'm going to go back over some of the other areas with a little bit more paint, but I've already made paint, but I'm just adding more. I'm gonna add one other color into her headpiece. Okay, so I'm going to add um, maybe one or two more colors and of another little layers of paint and then let all of this set and dry. I'm going to mix some of the gel medium in to soften this blue. Okay, so I've added a little blue around her uh, scarf material. We're gonna keep going with that a little bit. It's a pretty dark blue, so I'm trying to keep it not so dark. <laughs> and smudging it around with fingers or towel and adding the gel medium certainly helps with that. And I'm following the shadows that are on the photograph already. So I've just done some detail around her face, makes it, her face pop out more. And I'm going to do more later. I might uh, bring in some black and do some outlines and highlight her face a little bit more. But I'm going to let this whole layer dry because the next uh, step I want to do is some of the spray paint with the stencils in different areas. Um, and we're getting close, so this is great. We're going to let this dry, come back with the next step. So my next step is to do some stenciling. I am going to use the smaller stencil that I have. I think it's just a little more delicate. Um, I was going to use the spray paint to kind of make little patterns on the um, painting, but I began to think not everyone can get outside to use spray paint, which should always be used outside. And, um, if you're somewhere where it's raining, you know, it might be harder to get outside. So I'm going to show you a technique using dry brushing to create the stencil pattern. I'm going to use gold. Um, I have some gold paint here. It's not as bright as the uh, spray paint would be, but that's okay. Uh, you're going to take a dry brush. Uh, I'm using kind of a fairly big one and it's an old brush. You're going to lightly kind of dip the brush in the paint a few times, and then on a separate piece of paper or maybe your little rag, kind of dab off some of it so it's not just soaking wet with paint. Then line up your stencil. I'm going to do mine kind of random, and I like to come in from the edges in to give a, a bit of a pattern and it also points towards your center composition in a way. And you're going to take the brush and just tap, 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 hold your stencil still and just tap over straight down onto the, the open stencil areas. You'll see that it's covering the surface. You can go out just as far as you like. So over to that side you can see where I've dry brushed the stencil and I'm going to go over a few more spots kind of all over the painting. And just pick and choose. Um, they can be very small areas where you're just using a little bit of the pattern, be larger, 
totally up to you. I like to mix it up too so it's not all the same. Okay, so I think that's enough of the stencil for that color. And I might go back with a little bit of another color also. But you can kind of see where those patterns are, that kind of beehive pattern that's ended up. And I'm going to let that dry. So as per usual, I poured out more paint than I needed for the stenciling. And I've got some gold paint left over in the bowl here. Um, so I'm going to paint around the edges. The, the board that I picked has a nice, I don't know, maybe inch thick gallery wrap. And that's a nice edge to paint. It becomes kind of a frame for the painting, in a sense. So it can be fun to paint the edges, whatever color you want, a couple different colors. Where I folded over the painting, or the folded over the tissue from the painting, I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to paint over it because I, I like that green on there. It creates a real finished look to paint around the edges. So I am going to use up some of the glitter that I have on hand because it already exists in the world. So um, that's the only reason I'm using it. I uh, am going to apply some glue to the pink flowered areas that I did on her crown. And then I'm going to put the glitter on top of that to adhere it. I'm going to apply the glue with a brush. Um, instead of, you know, squirting out the glue. This way I can control, you know, more of where I want it to go. So you could do this on any area of your painting. You know, rhinestones, all sorts of stuff. Which would look really pretty on this as well. If I had some of those. And I'm not saying don't go out and buy anything. But I, I wanted to present a project that maybe you could do with the things you have on hand. Because we need to support those art stores. So I'm going to take the glitter and just sprinkle it over the areas that are coated with the glue. And let it sit. So even though there will be glitter in other areas, that those will brush off. So just I'm going to lightly sprinkle the glitter over those areas. Okay, I think I got that pretty good. And we're going to let this dry. So now I'm going to paint some outline around Frida's face and also um, maybe around some of the stenciled areas. I'm going to use a bright blue and I'm picking a brush that has more of a fine point to it so I can make smaller lines. And I'm just going to start applying it kind of around the shapes and just see where it goes. So whatever your photograph might be, you may want to uh, outline it. it might work out great. Um, you can just experiment with that yourself. So as you can see, I'm just creating an outline around her to kind of um, define her image a little bit more. I took it a little further into her flowers as well. What I also like to do on a painting style like this is to kind of splatter paint or drip paint some spots. Now the secret to that is having your paint watery enough but not too watery. So almost like a well blended smoothie type texture. This is a little more runny than that but I'm going to use it anyway. And you just get a lot on your brush and then simply let it drip. And you can kind of control the areas that it goes in. And I used, I'm going to use a lot of different colors to do the dripping. 
Um, so right now I just have the, the blue that I was using. And you can see the different drip spots. So I'm going to let that dry. Usually the dripping spots are very thick and take a long time to dry. I might go in and, and just put in some more dripping paint and let that, all of that dry at the same time. So I'm wrapping it up by adding some a little more black outline around my photograph and also within the photograph. So I'm defining more of, of the face, my facial features, as well as the hair and some of the clothing accents, the wrinkles in the clothing. I also like the idea of kind of outlining the piece and I'm not sure how to explain it, but unless, unless something is really holding it together, it just kind of looks like it keeps expanding. So I'm adding black outline around the edge of the painting. And I'm doing it with kind of a broken line. I'm not doing a solid line around the whole thing, around the border. I'm, I'm letting it be really loose and kind of a little squiggly, soft and, and light, and then into maybe a more darker, denser color. And I'm just going around the edges, kind of making this outline, framing it in. And I added, uh, like I said, more to her face and her hair just to give it, to bring it out more. I felt like her face was not defined enough. It wasn't bright enough. And uh, I think the black outlining really helped. Put some color on her lips as well. And I think, I'm, I think we're done. <laughs> and there it is. I hope you had a good time uh, trying the project and don't be afraid to keep trying it with different things. It's not just a one shot deal. It, it, once you discover the parts of this activity, this journey of experimentation, you'll find certain things that you really like. Like, oh, I really like the dripping paint part. Then you'll expand on that. Uh, and you could take that into your next piece or into other things you're working on. And different things like that, the stenciling, and just keep playing around with it. You can work very small if you just have little pieces of canvas or boards or whatever you want to work on. And, or you can try a larger piece if you, if you so desire. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching. Thanks for getting through the whole thing. And I'm sure your looks, yours looks great. And I would love to see it. Thank you so much. Signing off.